You are watching ESPN's Champ Week, presented by SoFi. A mammoth matchup. That's amazing. How you like that? It's win or go home time. Go time. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. The nightcap features the defending SEC tournament champions, the South Carolina Gamecocks, the number two seed this year, taking on Tennessee, a team who beat them in the regular season. Who knows what could happen in this game because we've already seen an upset inside the well here in Greenville, South Carolina. Georgia took down the top seed in this tournament, Texas A&M, an outstanding performance by the Georgia Lady Bulldogs. They are back in the tournament final for the first time since 2004. Who will they face? Will it be South Carolina or Tennessee? Winner moving on to that championship game tomorrow at 2 Eastern. Welcome back to Greenville. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Steffi Sorensen will also join us. Wow, South Carolina, they know what it feels like to be here. They were just here last year when they won that SEC tournament title. They've got a couple of players who are electric when it comes to scoring the basketball. Well, the two guards for South Carolina came out in that first quarter. They were dynamic. They were explosive. They used their quickness and they used their highlights. You see Des Destiny Henderson, she just kicks it into another gear, picking up speed. But I'm going to tell you, the highlight reel was full with plays from Zaya Cook. And one of the reasons that the guards were able to go is because they get touches for their post players, and specifically Aaliyah Boston. She had to be involved as well. That opens up things for the guards. These two combined for 30 points in that first game on Friday. Yeah, it's a dynamic duo, but Steffi, Tennessee's got a one-two punch that's really tough to stop, too. Yeah. Yeah, Courtney, guard play has been so big for Tennessee all season long. Ray Burrell and Renaya Davis combined for 51 points last game against Ole Miss. And after the game, Renaya Davis said, we don't have one game left, we've got two. She's feeling very confident, and her coach, Kelly Harper, trusts in that duo. She wants to see them be a little bit more patient in this game. And I'm talking guards, but I know, Peck, you feel like it's going to be a battle in the paint tonight. When these two teams met earlier this season, the battle in the paint, it was a tie. Both teams, 40 points. Who will dominate the lane area? It was Tennessee getting the win in the last meeting with South Carolina, ending the Gamecocks' 31-game SEC win streak. I don't think South Carolina has forgotten about that. Oh, I can guarantee they haven't forgotten. And Don Staley's word, deliberate. Ball goes up. Winner gets Georgia. South Carolina, an aggressive man-to-man -man team. Tennessee faced an aggressive man-to-man -man team in Ole Miss on yet yesterday. Renaya Davis a little bit short. It goes out of bounds off of Cassie Cush Kittawa. South Carolina starting five. We told you about Zaya Cook and Destiny Henderson. Aaliyah Boston, number four in the white jersey. She's on the national ballot for the Wooden Player of the Year. Because this is a post player that is dominant. But South Carolina has got to get touches with their post players. That opens up things for South Carolina. That's a great post up by Victoria Saxon inside. Two feet on the duck end. The foul is going to be on Kush Kittawa. Tennessee's got to be really careful when it comes to foul trouble. Both Tamari Key and Cassie Kush Kittawa picked up four fouls and had to play really cautious down the stretch against Ole Miss. Kelly Harper did a fantastic job, though, of really juggling. Cassie and Tamari, one would play for the other, but she was able to stretch it out without either one of them fouling out. Another quick foul for Tennessee, this one on Jordan Walker. So Cassie Kush Kittawa is going to go ahead and take a seat. Brie Beal gets the first one to go. It's going to be interesting to watch how these teams strategize of getting bites of the paint. Both teams like to play inside out. 
Tennessee's starting five. They've already had to make a substitution. Marta Suarez is in the game since Kush Kittawa picked up her first foul. Suarez for three. And Tamari Key using her length to rebound. Oh, that's a tough spot to be in. South Carolina had Ray Burrell trapped. It's going to go out of bounds off of the Gamecocks. I am so impressed with Aaliyah Boston. You watch on ball screen. She'll step out and head. She'll rotate out. Most, time, most times when you attack a big, you think that she would be slow afoot. You, that's not the case with Aaliyah Boston. She is an elite player and just a sophomore. I love it. Ray Burrell through contact. Puts her own miss back up and in. That second effort, you're going to get that from Ray Burrell every second she's on the floor. A second team All-SEC selection should have been on the first team. Can you say it again louder for the people in the back? Should have been on the first team. Now, Ray Burrell, at the beginning, from the beginning of the season, she has been a leader for this Lady Vol basketball team. She leads them in scoring. She leads them in intensity and energy. Davis steps in front of Beal to grab that rebound. Tennessee has had a great season. They are projected to be a four seed in the NCAA tournament at 16 and six overall, finishing third in the SEC. And that's what Destiny Henderson can do. Look, don't think you're going, if you don't stop her, don't think you can run alongside her because it's almost like she's got a stick shift. She just shifts on down to another gear and takes off. Coming off a game where she had 18 points, hit 70% of her shots from the field. She is efficient. That's one of the things Don Staley has talked to her about, about being deliberate. Well, this is an example of deliberate. There is no hesitation. She knows where she's going. She gets her shoulders, she gets those hips by the defender, gets all the way to the rack. What does that pace and speed at the point guard position do for South Carolina? Well, it, number one, it puts pressure on the defense. So now the defense is more concerned getting back to protect their basket than going to the glass for the offensive boards. The other thing that it does is it creates South Carolina an opportunity to get baskets and not have to score against the size of Tennessee. Bree Beal was called for her first foul. Renaya Davis is at the free throw line. I don't know if Renaya Davis could have played any better last night. She tied her career high with 33 points, left the game at one point with an ankle injury, ran back out to the floor from the locker room, and the cheers went up in the stands. Well, she comes back in the game, and then she closes out the end of the second quarter with a buzzer beater three-pointer knocks it down. Coach Yolette McPhee McEwen, she liked it so much, the coach of Ole Miss, she even gave Renia Davis a little, da a little dab on the sideline. <laughs> Davis has had 20 or more points in Tennessee's last six games. And yesterday, South Carolina did such a nice job of moving the basketball. The ball did not get stuck. Zaya Cook trying to get around the size of Tennessee. It's going to be Lady Vol basketball. That's one area Tennessee matches up really well size-wise with South Carolina. There are few teams that do. Well, exactly. When especially defensively, Tamari Key as the backstop for the Lady Vols did a nice job on that ball screen, just being right there and staying with the ball handler. There's Ray Burrell on the wing. Up top to Horston. Key under the basket too far. Henderson using the speed. Zaya Cook's gonna help her out. Watch the missed layups though for South Carolina. It's been a problem. But having, you gotta follow it up. That's the thing South Carolina has gotten accustomed to doing. If they're gonna miss layups, rebounders have to follow up. That's a smart pass by Tamari Key to Marta Suarez. Key has just matured so much in her sophomore season. Destiny Henderson has to recognize 
Tennessee's going underneath those ball screens. Bree Beal, it bounces around and out. Tennessee's gonna make South Carolina prove they can shoot that perimeter shot and make it consistently. Renaya Davis. He is working so hard on Aaliyah. Boston can she finish? Yeah, no problem. That's a super sophomore. Jordan Horst in the one, two. <laughs> Let me tell you, finals are on the line. Both these teams want to get to play tomorrow. Winner gets Georgia in the SEC Tournament Championship game. Cook was looking for Saxton. It'll be out of bounds off of Tennessee. I love Aaliyah Boston's post patience. She reads the defense, playing high. Tamari Key on the high side, so the drop step baseline. And then Jordan Horston, the little Euro step. And she's got the height advantage over Destiny Henderson to go to the basket. This will be South Carolina basketball. And Dawn Staley's gonna make a couple of substitutions here. Lily Grissett and Destiny Littleton will check into the game. Keep an eye on South Carolina's rotations, substitutions, and she talks about sometimes she goes to the bench and puts too many coming off the bench and she needs to sprinkle in. Still have a few starters on the floor. Foul called on Tennessee. Renaya Davis has been the engine that's made Tennessee go. We'll take a look at her journey. Renaya Davis, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida, trying to get Tennessee back to the finals and having a conversation with her about her journey, going all the way back to ninth grade. She feels like she's always been an underdog. On the AAU circuit, she felt like she was never ranked high enough. She was undervalued. People complain that she didn't have a, a high enough motor. And so she always feels like she comes out to games with a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, that she's got to fight a little bit extra to get further. And I know that's really translated now, that motor that she had been questioned. She might get to be a top 10 WNBA draft pick, Peck. Now she'll be a definite high draft pick because of the versatility. She's that three, four stretch that is of high demand in the WNBA. And you look at what Rebecca Lobo, how she graded her scoring an A minus. She's a deep threat. She's got the three and an upside. That's an A because let me tell you, when you have a player that is 6'2", scores the way she does and is a willing rebounder, that's huge. That's a great value for the league. Renaya Davis proved her worth. If she hadn't already, in that win over South Carolina, didn't have any points in the first half, had 24 in the second half, but she's hitting them in the first half tonight. Here she comes, already. <laughs> Aliyah Boston, she can hit the 3-2. You better watch out when number four is knocking them down. I'm gonna tell you, she, Aaliyah Boston got to touch it in the paint. The offense worked. She worked her way out to the three. The versatility of Aaliyah Boston. <laughs> Renaya Davis spots out. That's a great screen by Marta Suarez to give Davis time. And then Boston pops out because Cassie Keshkedewa just is not gonna come out that far and consistently guard Aaliyah Boston. Boston trying to work on Kush Kittawa right now. Kush Kittawa already has one foul. Lily Grissett sneaking around on the baseline. But who had the assist? Oh, that'd be Aaliyah Boston. She's just showing you she has a repertoire of total package for every aspect of her game. 
Too much traffic for that pass. Penny. South Carolina's doing a great job cleaning up. Yeah, they know that at times they will miss layups, but you can't just assume that it's done. Desi Henderson, she's running full speed, and Victoria Saxton follows it up, grabs it, snatches it, and focus and finish to get the offensive putback. You know, Dawn Staley took her team back after the game last night, and I know that Dawn went back and watched the film and all the missed layups. South Carolina was 13 of 26 layups yesterday, 50% unacceptable. So I can guarantee you she has addressed that with her team and said, if you're going to miss layups, somebody better be there to get the putback. Eight straight points for South Carolina. They are helping each other to put those missed layups back in the basket. and said, uh-uh. Transition points for Carolina. Momentum going towards the Gamecocks. They can score so fast. 10 straight points for South Carolina. The first quarter was South Carolina's yesterday. It's looking it might go that way today here in the semifinals of the SEC tournament. South Carolina has scored 10 straight points. Well, and they have the advantage of points in the paint, 12 to six. And a lot of it has come in transition or off offensive putbacks in the paint. Both of these teams get a majority of their points in the paint. Tennessee has put in Emily Saunders in the game. Which all you got to do sometimes is just let Renaya Davis shoot the ball. <laughs> She's got to get and get touches. But Davis with the crossover. Lily Grissett, she committed trying to cut off the baseline. Davis coming right back to the middle. First 15 games of the season, Renaya Davis, 14 and a half points per game. The last six, whoa, 25.5. Hey, that's how you close out your senior season. You got to be red hot. Davis told us that after she spent that one game in isolation due to medical reasons, did not play in the Kentucky game, she got refocused and got a different intensity about her, about her role and what she wanted this team to do as a whole. Well, when she came back, it was the Arkansas game. And she turned her ankle in the first half, second half. Wasn't that the game? 24 points? She had 24 points in the second half against South Carolina. South Carolina, I, I think, she, or 17. She had 17 points in the second half against Arkansas. So that was her first game back. Tennessee will let this one go. Tennessee's going to have to get some help, though, for Renaya Davis because South Carolina shooting 47%. This is who Tennessee needs to get going right here. Ray Burrell, but not with that turnover. Four turnovers now for Tennessee. Tisha, me here. Moving the ball, sharing the ball, going from an average shot to a great shot. That's what South Carolina is doing offensively right now. Jordan Walker takes the three, rebound by Aaliyah Boston. Ray Burrell wasn't looking for the pass. Zaya Cook took a hard hit. 
We're talking about South Carolina moving the basketball. They already have five assists. She kissed it right off the glass. I hope she called it. It still counts. I like the bank shot from the wing like that. <laughs> A 16 to two run for South Carolina, defending their SEC tournament championship. They wanna get back to that final game tomorrow and face Georgia. You know that South Carolina came into this tournament with a little sour taste in their mouth because Texas A&M was the regular season champion, not South Carolina. That's how they're used to coming into this tournament. And I asked Don Staley, I said, well, you know, is that a little extra motivation now that you're the underdog? And she said, no, I think I like it better coming in being the regular season champ. Yeah. You come in with a lot more confidence. You may be a little wounded when you come in and you're not the top dog. Ray Burrell takes a seat. Davis airballs it. The speed from Henderson. And Zaya Cook gets fouled by Jordan Walker. That's going to be three shots coming up. Now, even though South Carolina is not the top dog in this tournament, they've come in playing like the top dog. Yeah, they've hit the reset button. And here, Zaya Cook's gonna go to the free throw line and shoot three. But coming in to this tournament, they had an opportunity to hit the reset button in practice and focus a lot on their offense of moving the basketball, playing together, sharing the ball, and relying on each other. Well, tomorrow afternoon, the regular season finale for number 18, Texas Tech, and number three, Baylor. This one has big-time NCAA tournament implications. You can see it at 4 Eastern on ESPN and the app. One more free throw coming for Zaya Cook. Count them all. Well, South Carolina had a great first quarter yesterday. How will they follow that up now? Coming to the end of the first, going into the second. Offensive foul on Tennessee. And it's on Renaya Davis. A you know, player that likes to take a big shot at the end of the quarter is Zaya Cook. Keep an eye on number one. She's got the basketball right now. Here's Zaya, the spin, the fadeaway misses. That'll be the end of the first quarter. Big lead for South Carolina. Sharing the basketball, moving the ball, being deliberate about what you want to make happen. That's how you get it done right there. Zaya Cook off the glass, headed into the second in control. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. And Burger King. Mix and match your favorites for just five bucks. South Carolina feeling like they're at home right here in Greenville, South Carolina. They have been a one or two seed in the last seven tournaments. They've only lost one game in this tournament over the last seven years. And they've won that championship five out of the last six. And last year, after they won the way that they did, they thought that they were headed into the NCAA tournament with a potential to go after a national championship before things were shut down for COVID. So Don had talked about earlier this year the mentality of coming in and finishing unfinished business for Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Yeah, South Carolina was projected last year after this tournament to be the top seed in the NCAA tournament. They were on track to win a national championship, and then everything was shut down just a few days after that SEC tournament championship game. I was looking so forward to the NCAA tournament. South Carolina, Oregon, Baylor, 
in the hunt. South Carolina still projected as a number one seed this year by Charlie Cream. They need to win this tournament. That will definitely help them keep that number one seed. Absolutely, because coming into the tournament, Charlie Cream talked about that a couple other conferences could affect whether or not South Carolina remained on that one line. Davis has been the one with the hot hand for Tennessee. This is Jordan Horston. But you see who South Carolina put on Renaya Davis. Bree Beal. She is the defensive specialist for South Carolina. There she is making a play, but Ray Burrell grabs it. See now, I want Tamari Key to post up, bend her knees and establish position inside. Davis crashing the glass. Out to Henny it goes. A wide open Destiny Henderson. It's a dangerous thing. South Carolina's feeling it. They got a lot of confidence working for in their favor right now. It's incredible how they have flipped the switch from just six days ago. They lost that game to Texas A&M, lost the SEC regular season title. They've looked like a new team in Greenville. Well, when you have time to go back home, watch some film, do some individual workouts, regroup, do some mental training, and it's paid off. Can't drive baseline here. Not with Aaliyah Boston camping in the paint. A 22-2 run for South Carolina. No, oh, Tennessee gives it right back. Aaliyah Boston just dominant. Give me that. Snatch it. Pull it away. This is my basketball. And then she's like, here, Henny, take it. Give me another assist. And Destiny Henderson takes it down. But when you're driving in the paint, that's almost like going down a one-way street the wrong direction. Don't go at Aaliyah Boston. Aaliyah Boston makes so many different things happen for South Carolina. Horston stopped that putback. Horston's able to make an adjustment driving inside. Well, Horston needs to take an, upon herself to have more opportunities offensively. With her length at the point guard spot, she can take advantage over a Zia Cook or a Bree Bill. Lily Grissett gets loose. Tennessee basketball. Yeah, Peck, it's going to have to be Jordan Horson because you remember talking to Don Staley earlier today. She said defensively, when it comes to Renaya Davis and Ray Burrell, they want to cut their production in half and limit the rebounds. So somebody outside of the duo is going to have to step up and either rebound or get some uh, free looks at the basket. At this level in the SEC, you're not going to stop everything from a team. So you pick your poison. And Don Staley's concentrating on Ray Burrell and Renaya Davis. And yeah, Tennessee can't get much inside thanks to Aaliyah Boston. Maybe if they beat her down the floor. But then there's two more South Carolina Gamecocks that can deny your shot. It's a no-fly zone under the basket. The length, the timing, the tenacity of the nasty from South Carolina. You're just making up words over there. All day long. <laughs> Trickeration. Here for it. <laughs> Jordan Walker to the foul line. Lily Grissett whistled for her second foul for South Carolina. But you look at the number of layups that South Carolina has missed, and they're still winning the paint battle 14 to 8.
South Carolina came out, put up 29 points in the first quarter, only gave up 13 to Tennessee. Now Tennessee in the 2-3 zone. Oh, but an offensive foul. They called the offensive foul on Victoria Saxton, so it's no bucket for Zaya Cook. Saxton, she's moving as Ray Burrell is trying to get out to defend. And Tennessee throws it away, their eighth turnover. Tennessee had 23 turnovers yesterday. They've got to do a much better job of taking care of the ball. South Carolina scored 12 points off of those turnovers. Dawn Staley's got to get Victoria Saxon out of the game. She's got two fouls. Give it to Henny. Burrell steps into it. Tennessee shooting under 30%. And South Carolina takes a time out. On top 32 to 17. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. Trans, you see the blocks? I mean, this defense for South Carolina is incredible. It's intimidating. It's all about the defense, but one of the things I'm looking for, will South Carolina put their foot on the gas? Alabama was able to make a few runs. They cut the South Carolina lead to seven yesterday after trailing by 27 points. Gamecocks want to hit that gas and keep it moving. Well, and Tennessee has shown that they got comeback in them as well. The two bugaboos for these teams, it is turnovers, for Tennessee, it's Miss Layups for South Carolina. Do you know what a bugaboo is, Courtney? I do. Okay, as long as we're on the same page. It's like a thorn in your side. That is it. Tamari Key finding a way to finish against Aaliyah Boston. Hey, Tamari Key, I think Tennessee needs to use her more and go straight at Aaliyah Boston, the best way to defend Aaliyah Boston is to get her in some foul trouble. That's just the first on Boston. Tennessee has some foul trouble of its own. Cassie kush has been on the bench most of this first half with two fouls. South Carolina was shooting 50%, but since then, they've missed eight. And they spent a lot of time working on their zone offense. Ball movement is key, making the defense have to shift. There's a good shot. Destiny Henderson. I mean, shots will come so much easier instead of just a one pass, put it up against a zone, make the defense have to shift. It'll go from an average shot to a great shot. Well, I think over the last two games, we're seeing South Carolina realize that. They seem more comfortable moving the ball around. Well, they've got to find that sweet spot between when is it time to shoot the ball, when do I need to get it inside? Jordan Walker scoring there for Tennessee. The Lady Vols have got to get their offense working more consistently. Henderson this time from the other wing. Ernaya Davis elevates, but she's short. Tamari Key, yes! 
Well, here's what Tennessee has done. They have moved Renaya Davis to the four. So she's playing that stretch position with Tamari Key playing the five. It's gonna be a foul on Ray Burrell. Ray Burrell was like a pinball in that defensive sequence. She just kept running into people and finally got called for the foul. First foul on Burrell. Slow start offensively for Ray Burrell. She's one for seven. Horston. Woo. Tennessee can cut it to single digits. Turnover. Ninth turnover for Tennessee. South Carolina has numbers. Fouls on Jordan Walker. Unselfish, making the extra pass. South Carolina might have overpassed here. But still the willingness, Don Staley's got to be happy with that. No bucket, the foul happened before that. Three fouls on Jordan Walker. And the officials have huddled up to talk about this. Keep an eye on Zaya Cook running off a double stagger screen. Burrell got through. Cook got her points anyway. Yeah, underneath, out of bounds. Always find, I locate my eye, looks for number one because I think she's gonna be the first option. She's a pretty good option. Step back three for Renaya Davis. That's two on Boston. Tamari Key mixing it up inside. I don't know whose arm interlocked with who, but Key ended up on the floor and the official gave Key the benefit of the doubt. Eight points, two fouls for Leah Boston. So Victoria Saxton is headed to the scorer's table. She's got two fouls too. Now can Saxton survive this last little less than two minutes of the game without picking up her third? Carolina has led by as many as 19 points. Winner of this game moves on to the SEC final where they will face Georgia. Horston swiped it. Reveal got it back. The hustle. The defensive stopper. Free throws are coming up for South Carolina. I just love the extra effort of Bree Bill running in transition. That's a player that doesn't give up on a play, especially defensively. You're going to see a lot of deflections coming from number 12, Bree Bill. Tamari Key on the bench with two fouls. Kush Kittawa has two fouls. Jordan Walker for Tennessee has three. Well, tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN2, Stanford taking on UCLA in the Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament Championship. See it at 8 Eastern on ESPN2. Kiana Williams is on the wooden watch list, the top 15 players for Stanford. 
Stanford's had a pretty good season. They've had to play a lot of games away from their home gym. I mean, it's been a wild season out in the Pac-12. It definitely has, but a lot of great competition and a team out in the Pac-12 that had hit their stride was Oregon State and because they had been on stops and starts all season long. Held ball, possession arrows pointing to Tennessee. South Carolina, a plus seven turnover margin. They had 24 points off of those turnovers by Alabama yesterday. Tonight, plus five, 16 points off of Tennessee's 10 turnovers. And that's what South Carolina's identity. You've got Aaliyah Balsam, dominant post, but then the defense of South Carolina. Horston will take the three. Zaya Cook with the clock winding down in the half. This is her time. For two, short. Tennessee outscores South Carolina 12 to 10 in the second quarter, but the Gamecocks have the lead 39 to 25. Winner moving on to the championship game. Let's get you back to the studio with Alyssa. Tennessee 39 to 25 as we get start set for the start of the third quarter winner moving on to the championship game Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck and Steffi Sorensen Aaliyah Boston makes this South Carolina team go it was a no fly zone in the paint when Boston's down there well she just flexed her muscles starting out with the drop step she was getting it done really owning the paint but she also showed the diversity of her repertoire knocking down the three and then the stopper the eraser don't bring it in here and then not so nice Aaliyah Boston trying to get a little nasty yeah and that's been a challenge from Don Staley she wants to see some toughness some grittiness she said this team is too nice and talking to Aaliyah Boston after yesterday's game she felt like they need to put their foot on the gas and accelerate can they do it for two quarters that is remains to be seen Steffi, South Carolina is trying to get back to the championship game. They won this tournament last season. They have won five of the last six SEC tournaments. But the Lady Vols, they are hungry to get to the finals as well. Against Ole Miss, they were down as much as eight and had a comeback. They're down 14 right now to South Carolina. Tennessee trailed by 16 points in the regular season meeting against South Carolina and came back to win. Destiny Henderson, easy paint points. Destiny Henderson loves the SEC tournament. Last season, she averaged 13 points, 4.7 assists, and shot 50% from the floor. Renaya Davis gets her shot blocked. It was Bree Beal. Two three zone for Tennessee. Boston comes out to the elbow, to the corner. To the other corner. And they'll do it again. That's two. That is two three-pointers today for Aaliyah Boston. It didn't touch anything but the bottom of the net. Boston now with 10 threes on the season. 
Tennessee struggled with some foul trouble in that first half. Ray Burrell has also not gotten going yet, just one of seven from the field. Walker will take it way short. Travel on Tamari Keith. South Carolina, the willingness to move the basketball against Tennessee's zone. That's a patience. Dawn Staley said that she wanted her team to be a little more patient offensively. Want to play fast, but you've got to be disciplined and you've got to be patient to get great shots. The word has been deliberate for Dawn Staley and this team. They have been deliberate in this tournament. You've got to be, if you want to go after a championship, Deliberate means there's no question marks. You understand the game plan. Whatever you do, you are 100% committed to it. Saxton's going to lose this one. It will be Tennessee basketball. As we mentioned, Tennessee was able to overcome a pretty big deficit in that first meeting. They trailed by 16 points. Tennessee came back and won and beat South Carolina into that 31-game SEC win streak. Tennessee outscored South Carolina 50 to 30 in the second half. And I think now Tennessee needs to try to use their bigs. Go inside. That's a good find right there for Tamari Key. Tennessee is such a good team when Kush Kittawa and Key are both on the floor. They have upped their games this season. Well, now they have changed their defense, gotten out of that zone, and gone to a man. Zaya Cook. Oh, two missed layups. Now, Leah Boston's got to be careful. She doesn't, she doesn't get the basketball, needs to head the other direction. She's got two fouls. Walker got blocked by Saxton. It's a good decision by Destiny Henderson to pull the ball back out. Let the offense work. Tamari Key just shut down. Zaya Cook, but she's got a friend, and her name is Aaliyah Boston. Look, Boston looks like she is ready to put her foot on the gas. Can Tennessee chip away? Jordan Walker for three in the corner. See, South Carolina has got to understand, you can't start clock watching, think you got a double-digit lead, everything's well and fine. Tennessee has another run in them. They have come back from double-digit deficits multiple times this season. Did it against South Carolina, did it against Ole Miss in the regular season meeting. They trailed by 13 points before they won that game. Well, and Ray Burrell got turned up in the second half yesterday. Renaya Davis had a big game, 33 points. And Breville's going to be called for the foul. Got tripped up over there. Jordan Horston will replace Jordan Walker. So now Renaya Davis playing the four. Cassie Kesketawa is the five. So now Victoria Saxon is matched up on Jordan Horston. That could be key. Ray Burrell seeing the basket, the ball go through the basket. Well, with Victoria Saxon having to match up with Jordan Horston, she's out of the paint. That takes the shot blocker away. So now Ray Burrell is free to drive to the rack. Just the second field goal for Burrell. She's got four points, four rebounds, three assists. Still contributing. I love that about her. No matter what her offense is doing, she's still helping Tennessee. Well, and she just brings that energy, that competitiveness to the floor. Oh, the speed, though. Got to hit the layup. 
Boston rebound, bucket, clean up. Sometimes it gets messy down there. Double dribble on Kush Kittawa. South Carolina on top here in the SEC Tournament semifinal. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Burger King. Mix and match your favorites for just five bucks. Well, as of late, this tournament has belonged to South Carolina. They have won five out of the last six SEC tournament titles, including a huge win last season when they were the number one team, not just in the SEC, in the country. They have been ranked number one at times this year, currently seventh in the nation, projected to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. And they only have four losses. They lost to NC State. They lost to Connecticut. Tennessee and Texas, Texas A&M. Yes. None of those are bad losses. Not at all. And I think the good sign is moving forward, they're playing some of their best basketball right now. Exactly. And I think that, again, I think winning can cover up a lot of warts. And when they lost to Texas A&M, that allowed Dawn Staley to get her team's attention. Jordan Walker has been a bright spot for Tennessee. She is leading them in scoring right now with nine points. Well, she has looked for her shot. She's one for three from three, but she's been having, she's had driving opportunities as well. Destiny Henderson at the top of the key. Brie Beal almost had it. It'll be Tennessee's ball. Carolina came out, they put up 29 points in the first quarter, only gave up 13 to Tennessee, kind of setting the tone for the semifinal. Well, they did the same thing yesterday against Alabama, set the tone in the first quarter, but then allowed Alabama in the second half to creep their way back into the ball game. South Carolina cannot afford to let Tennessee get mo momentum swung in their direction. That's going to be turnover number 13 for Tennessee. South Carolina has scored 18 points off of those turnovers. The Gamecocks ball movement has been really good. Smart decisions from this team. That's an offensive foul, though, on Lily Grissett. Third on Grissett. And both of these coaches, really, it's like a chess match. So they've gone with a true five and a small forward. And Cassie Kushkedawa able to finish inside over Boston. First points for Kushkedawa. She spent most of the first half on the bench in foul trouble. Well, Cassie, you see her working early, working early. When a post works early, that means she wants the basketball. As soon as Boston went to go help on penetration, Cassie was available. Free Beal inside. What do I call that? Bully ball. You know it. She's one of your favorites. We all know it. Oh, she just, she's so strong and commits to defense. Pharrell and Zaya Cook hit the deck, but it will be South Carolina ball. That defense for Brie Beal, that's what got her in the starting lineup every game last year as a freshman. Yep, that's one of the things that Dawn Staley was watching. It was like every day in practice and all, she just, she believes, she's a true coach that says, if you play defense, you get on the floor. And Brie Bill brought the defense every single day. And she's still bringing it as a sophomore. Yeah. But don't get it twisted. Brie Bill can also score the basketball as well. She was a scorer coming out of high school. 
Now she was the number 11 overall recruit, a three-time Gatorade Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American, played in the Jordan Brand Classic. Tennessee makes a sub, Marta Suarez in for Ray Burrell. Another missed layup for South Carolina. That time, nobody there for the cleanup. Oh, Coach Kittawa turned around, and Boston was right up in her grill. It was like the lights went out inside. Cassie needs to keep working, keep working. Oh, the no look. Now that's nasty. Tennessee takes a timeout. from Henny. When Henny's got the basketball coming down in transition, don't look at the eyes. Don't look at the eyes. She's got tricks. Tricks are for kids, you silly rabbit. Welcome back to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by SoFi. You talk about coming in with confidence. The no-look pass to Lily Grissett, South Carolina, rocking, rolling, owning Greenville inside the well. They are on their way to earning that spot in the championship game with a big lead over Tennessee. You take a look at the bracket, Georgia upset Texas A&M 74 to 68 earlier today. So winner of this game gets the Georgia Lady Bulldogs. And the way that they are playing right now, Maya Caldwell, but Jordan Walker ain't going away for the Lady Vols. She just needs a little help. Walker is the smallest player on the floor right now, but she is getting it done for the Big Orange. She's the only player in double figures with 11 points, four of eight from the field. <laughs> 45 seconds to go in the quarter. South Carolina put up 29 points in the first quarter. And they haven't looked back since. I can guarantee you, Dawn Staley challenged her team in the locker room. Come out to this third quarter, and you've got to have it. Make it as good as the first quarter was today. Rainbow three. Largest lead for the Gamecocks. Now keep an eye on Renaya Davis. Tennessee won't be able to get one more bucket. South Carolina leads by 20. Zaya Cook, we talked about putting a foot on the gas. There's a dagger right there for three. Has South Carolina up 20. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. An upset to start the afternoon of semifinals. Georgia taking down the top seed in the SEC tournament, 74 to 68. Maya Caldwell led the way with 19 points. And Joni Taylor, well, she'll be coaching in an SEC tournament final tomorrow on her birthday. What better way to celebrate going in and going after a championship? It could only be better to win a championship. She's going to face the winner of this one, and right now it looks to be South Carolina. They've got a 20-point lead, still 10 minutes to go, but 
That's a lot of work for Tennessee to do. Well, and Dawn Staley has challenged her team to not be so nice. She has blamed that on their lack of ability to put their foot on the gas. Can they bring the nasty through the rest of this fourth quarter? South Carolina put up 29 points in the first quarter. They put up 20 points in the third quarter. Renaya Davis whistled on the foul. It was interesting coming into the season for South Carolina. They had to find that new identity, those new roles with a very young team. You lose two seniors who did so much for this group last year. And yeah, this sophomore class has the experience of that year, but they've had to find themselves again in a new spot. Well, yeah, when you graduate players like Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan, those are tough to re those were two leaders that brought the emotion brought an attitude to the team as well they had the refuse to lose mentality remember they didn't lose an sec game last season only lost two this season one of those was to tennessee the other was to texas a and m on sunday henderson now has 13 points she's done a nice job of taking over this team well, the three key players for South Carolina in double figures, Cook with 17, Henderson 13, and Aaliyah Boston with 15. Largest lead for the Gamecocks. Tisha, me here, ran out of room. She's just got to do a better job to not turn the ball over. And Tennessee's going to call timeout. Destiny Henderson, she is zoned in, lined up, and knocking down the three. Excuse me, Tennessee did not call timeout. Henderson was called for her first foul. Possession arrow pointing to South Carolina. <laughs> Justine Henderson trying to hold Zaya Cook back. Watch the underneath out of bounds. The defense, though, that South Carolina, they don't quit, and they're covering for each other. So there's been some chatter going on on the floor. Renaya Davis, Zaya Cook, both being held back by their teammates. Look at Jolette Law talking to Zaya Cook. Make sure the sophomore keeps a level head. And Zaya Cook's okay. She's just a competitor. Kelly Harper's going to sub out Renaya Davis. There was a technical foul issued to Renaya Davis, and that is her fourth. Davis has given so much to Tennessee. She has been so loyal to this program. She has. There were two players that in her in her signing class that transferred, but Renaya Davis, she decided to stay. She said she came to Tennessee to really leave a legacy, to put her footprint on the program. And she has done that. She has come in, she has contributed. And I tell you what, she will play hard because she has great respect for Kelly Harper. Projected to be a first round pick in the WNBA draft this season. So this is a double technical. They also get Zaya Cook on the technical foul. Emotions running high when you're playing to try to advance to the finals tomorrow. I got 
Oh, I think she got away. Leticia, Leticia and me here got away with a few extra steps. That's a 16th turnover for Tennessee. Don Staley talked to her team about having that next opportunity to win a championship. They didn't get the job done on Sunday when the SEC regular season title was on the line. So the message was, next time it's up for grabs, you better take it. And they have done that. They have started both of these games like they are playing like a team on a mission. They brought the intensity defensively and collectively on the offensive on the offensive side sharing the basketball. The Jordan Horston, she's got a post on her. She decides to take it herself and gets the finish. Tennessee doesn't come back and win this game. They are still in the NCAA tournament. What was cool about going into the semifinals today was that all four teams from the SEC that made it here to the conference tournament semifinals are projected to be top four seeds in the NCAA tournament. I mean, just talks about how tough the SEC is. And I mean, really, all four of these teams could be national contenders as well. to Henderson. Blocked by Key. Set almost waited a bit too long for that shot clock. Quick bucket by Burrell. And Tennessee will take a timeout. South Carolina on top, 62 to 45. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. And Geico, you could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. We started the show talking about Destiny Henderson. She just got another speed. Watch how she just passes everybody. She also has been red hot, knocking down the three ball as well. And the point guard, what does she do really, really well? Dropping dimes, check this out. Right there, Destiny Henderson being the leader, the point guard for South Carolina. She had 18 points against Alabama, 13 tonight. Yeah, talking to Don Staley about who's been the most improved player on this South Carolina team. You, you could go down the line with Zaya Cook, Aaliyah Boston, but she said it's been Destiny Henderson who's really improved, and especially from that point guard position, guys. She's so much different than Ty Harris. But the one thing that Don Saley loves about Destiny Henderson, she's so cool and calm and never gets rattled at that point guard spot, which obviously we know is tough to play for for Don Staley. Well, because Don Staley was one of the best point guards in the world. But was she cool and calm, Peck? No, she yeah. had some spice. <laughs> she had spice. Don Staley had some spice. But, this, but Don Staley has talked about when she has had to coach Destiny Henderson, she would be telling her and on her, Destiny, you have to do this, that, or whatever. And Destiny Henderson would look at her and say, got it. Got it. And move on. Well, Destiny Henderson really took a turn, too, after that UConn game. She had eight turnovers in that game, but really readjusted, knew immediately the changes that she need, needed to make. And the biggest game correction that she made is on penetration into the lane. Look, when you get past that free throw line area, you better have your mind made up. When you get in there and you pick up your dribble, that's a big no-no. And since then, really haven't seen that from Destiny Henderson. 
Pass deflected into the hands of Tennessee. Renaya Davis gives it back. Tennessee wanted a travel call as Bree Beal slid across the floor. But Lily Grissett still down. Lily Grissett, this is the lone senior for South Carolina. Jordan Walker kind of just collided with her. But it was quick to see Aaliyah Boston on her knees. And then once they got Lily Grissett up, Zaya Cook waved off. Don Staley said, no, our senior's good. Leave her in the game. She's still in there and gets down the floor first for Carolina. Oh, Bree Beal almost had a steal. It's a foul on Henderson. Second on Destiny Henderson. Now one called on Aaliyah Boston. So now the rest of the way, Tennessee in the bonus. Tamari Key at the line. Winner of this game moving on to the championship tomorrow. It'll be at 2 Eastern on ESPN2. Whoever wins this will face Georgia, who upset Texas A&M today. And Georgia, let me tell you something. They are on a roll. They, Those seniors, they have played together. They are on a mission. Their defense, great tenacity. Gary Blair, Texas A&M's coach, made an interesting point to us this morning that he noticed the top seven scorers in the SEC were out of the tournament before the semifinal round. Those teams were gone. It was the teams that played together, that used everybody that were still remaining. Well, that have other options so that right. any opponent that plays these teams here. If you want to take away option, option A, well, this teams can go, these teams can go to option B or C or even D. Boston tracks that one down. 17th offensive rebound for Carolina. Carolina has a 10 rebound advantage over Tennessee. And Aaliyah Boston has her 14th double-double of the season. 11 of those have come against SEC opponents. She's so good. And like you said, just a sophomore. South Carolina has benefited from Tennessee's 17 turnovers. They've scored 18 points off of those turnovers. Scoring drought here, though, for Carolina. Offensive foul on Bree Beal. And see, now South Carolina gotten away a little bit from being deliberate. They were executing so smoothly in that third quarter. Now that the game is late, it seems to be with this extended lead, you still have to play discipline all the way to the very end. South Carolina does have four of their five starters on the floor right now. Well, tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN2, we check out the ACC Women's Tournament Championship. Louisville defeated Syracuse. They are moving on. They're going to take on NC State in that championship game at 12 Eastern on ESPN2. Following that game will be the SEC Tournament. 
at 2 Eastern over on ESPN2. Georgia in the winner of this game. This tournament has been fantastic. When you look at even starting on Wednesday, for the first four games, games were decided in single digits. So it wasn't until Friday that there started to be create some separation. South Carolina has created some separation in this game from Tennessee. How is Georgia going to be challenging South Carolina tomorrow if the Gamecocks hang on here and move on? Well, the biggest thing, first and foremost, for Georgia's Jenna State, he's got to stay out of foul trouble because they're going to need her size in the game to, co to combat with Aaliyah Boston and then just match the energy and the intensity that they have brought in their first two games here in, Gre in Greenville, South Carolina. Georgia has gotten some key contributions, specifically from Maya Caldwell. Their senior class has been outstanding, but Maya Caldwell has been lighting it up. She's averaging over 20 points in their last three games. She seems to get, keep getting better yeah. <laughs> as the postseason goes on. But the South Carolina, you know, in this fourth quarter, they are one of 10 from the floor, five turnovers in the fourth quarter. They got to finish the deal. They got to finish the game the way they started. Now we were talking about Caldwell. You see her last two games. 23.5 points. I believe that's Joni Taylor's husband. Is that Darius? Can't tell with the mask. It's a Georgia fan. I can tell you that. Look at the confidence of how Aaliyah Boston handles the basketball. There was one game, remember the game we had of South Carolina? I can't remember who the opponent was. She drove the length of the floor with the shot clock winding down with the ball and hit a shot at the buzzer. Oh, and don't leave out. She put a little inside out move as she was bringing the ball down. And then turned around and winked. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> she spent some time with assistant coach Jolette Law when coach Law is working with the guards and the ball handling. Aaliyah Boston wants to get Time, get some of that action and working on all aspects of her game. And we talk about Don Staley a lot, but she has an amazing team around her of assistant coaches, Joe Letlaw, Fred Schimmel, Lisa Boyer. They've got the number one recruiting class coming in next year again. Yeah. McDonald's All-Americans that are on that team and one player, they're all very talented, but one that I've been able to see play, Raven Johnson from Georgia. Talk about a baller. Raven, she's a guard. She can score it. She'll defend it. She knows the game. She's got some spice to her game. She is the number two overall recruit, and she is coming to South Carolina. I don't know how Destiny Henderson got that pass around to Leticia, me here, but she did. Henderson will take a seat and she gets cheers from the crowd. 13 points, seven rebounds, five assists for Destiny Henderson. Remember last year in the SEC tournament, she averaged 13 points a game, almost five assists a game and shot 50% from the floor. Aaliyah Boston also will take a seat. Another double-double for Boston, 15 points, 11 boards. There hasn't really been a question in this game. South Carolina scored 29 points in the first quarter. They've led by as many as 21. Just a minute and nine seconds away from a spot in the SEC Tournament Championship game. If you're gonna be a team that is going to be a contender for a national championship, you have got to demonstrate against good teams that once you get a lead, you can ex extend that lead. Put your foot on the gas. I saw a glimpse of that from South Carolina today. Alyssa Wesselick hits the free throw. 
Brie Beal comes out. Four points, four rebounds for Beal. Olivia Thompson in. And Horston is fouled. We started this day with an upset. Georgia, the four seed in the SEC tournament, took down the one seed, the SEC regular season champs, Texas A&M. Georgia playing some great basketball. And of course, Joni Taylor, the SEC coach of the year. And such a great defensive strategist. We have seen her in so many games this year that you think, what will Georgia do? And Joni Taylor has a plan. And she usually can take away teams' first and second option, force them to go to the third option, and then get the most out of her team and have them bring the intensity defensively. Destiny Littleton draws the foul. Best thing you've seen out of South Carolina tonight? I think first and foremost, the moving of the basketball. I see a more, I see a team that is more connected offensively of sharing the ball, not forcing, not thinking, I've got to do it all by myself. That has started to come together much, that has come together much more improved than what I saw earlier in the season. Also, Destiny Henderson, she's in charge of the team. She has the keys to the bus, and it looks like she's in charge and getting everybody where they need to be. It's a pretty big bus. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know what else I have seen? Zaya Cook, under control, on balance, making good decisions. That's another sophomore moving in the right direction. Yeah, we asked John Staley about Zaya Cook coming into this game after her performance yesterday in the quarterfinals. She said she was purposeful. That's been the difference. Not out of control. Knows what she's doing. Well, you use pers purposeful. Don Staley talks about deliberate. She's been talking about that for the last couple of weeks. And every South Carolina player that you talk to, I don't care if you're talking about what you're going to have for lunch, those players are going to bring up the word deliberate. So they've gone to the monitor to see if anything extra happened on this last play. No, I don't no. think so. She was just turning around trying to go for the ball. That's Destiny's salary for Tennessee. How happy are you to be here? There's no better feeling right now. Absolutely. And going to call the finals tomorrow. We will have the final for you tomorrow, Georgia, and the winner of this one tomorrow at 2 Eastern. Up here from our perch, it has been fantastic to actually see basketball in person. Absolutely. And, you know, we got, and Steffi Swanson's down there as well. <laughs> But to be able to come to shoot arounds to see, even if it was from a distance, to see the players in person. And it's so much different. I have a greater appreciation of seeing them live. South Carolina. You know, Tennessee will have the opportunity to go back, recruit, get ready for the NCAA tournament. They're a team that has shown great improvement from last year to this year, and also they have evolved throughout this season. They're going to be a team to reckon with in the NCAA tournament. Charlie Cream has them as a four seed. 
And South Carolina can walk this one up the floor. Gamecocks feel pretty comfortable here in Greenville, as they should. They won this tournament last year. A chance to repeat tomorrow. South Carolina on to the championship game. They came in as the underdog, the number two, but going into the finals tomorrow, they're the top team. Now, how will they play? Will they start out in like gangbusters like they did the first two games of the season? Will they set the tone? Because this is going to be a defensive battle between Georgia and South Carolina. We're in for a good one tomorrow. South Carolina came out, scored 29 points in the first quarter, never looked back. Three players in double figures for Don Staley tonight. They get the win over Tennessee, 67 to 52. That sets up our matchup tomorrow. South Carolina will face Georgia at 2 Eastern on ESPN2 with the SEC Tournament Championship on the line. Well, you've got a young team. There are three sophomores in the starting lineup for South Carolina. There are four hungry seniors that start for Georgia. So will experience, will that matter? There's a look at our bracket, Georgia and South Carolina. That is the matchup tomorrow with a title on the line. It is going to be a fun one. Can South Carolina repeat? We will find out tomorrow at 2 Eastern. Destiny Henderson is standing by with Steffi. You know, Destiny, I talked to Aaliyah yesterday after the game. She said, you guys need to put your foot on the gas in the second half. You guys did that. What was the biggest key for that? Um, my defense, I feel like that gave us momentum. Um, we just had to keep the pressure on and that really contribute on our offensive end. So. Your, your coach also says that you guys are too nice. Is that true? I feel like we can be, but I feel <laughs> okay. like these last two games, we really have proven ourselves. And, you know, we just got to stay connected, so. Well, you guys are headed back to the finals. You have experience. What do you feel like will be key for you guys to ultimately win an SEC championship? Um, energy. Um, I feel like we just need to be on the same page, for one. Um, and I feel like if we do that and we just come out for 40 minutes, um, we just got to be deliberate, like our coach always say. Deliberate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a big word for us right now. Um, it's, and it's really been helping us. So just do that, do the little things, and you know we'll come out on top. Well, we, we'll be watching. Thanks Thank for you. your time, Destiny. Courtney. Thank you so much. South Carolina gets it done. Don Staley coaching in the SEC tournament final again. We'll see them take on Georgia tomorrow at 2 Eastern. What a fun ride it has been in the semifinals today. An upset. And the defending tournament champion going back to the final. South Carolina wins at 67-52. I can go anywhere, do anything I want to do.